Hey guys, Paro here with an Affinity Designer vector base tutorial. I want to talk about some of the techniques I've developed for layering and masking hair or any object really, but here's the hair in front and behind the face shape. Uh, I've got five techniques and the timestamps will be in the video description below. Um, just a note, this is not a beginner tutorial, this is more application basis and just search for a beginner tutorial if you like one. I find it's really important for my workflow to keep similar objects as one shape. So that just really helps with the shading and the color grading, all those things further down the line. So getting this right at the start is just so much easier. So method one is basic masking. So I have the ear here in front and behind the hair. I've achieved that with a just a straight up mask. So start with a black rectangle, copied the ear, and then boolean subtracted it from my uh, black rectangle apply that as a mask on top same with this little cutout here now you can see the stroke is a bit smaller here i was a bit lazy and didn't fit it exactly right so you just have to uh, get that boolean operation perfect so if we tweak this stroke to be inside i'm sure we would get the uh, the proper stroke thickness around there. Right, so the next method that I have here is the blend mode erase technique. I quite like this one and I'll show you how it works now. So we have the hair as one piece again and here's the ear in front and behind. So I just overdrew the ear. Um, I'll turn off that so you can see it's been overdrawn. I duplicated the hair and just node edited this section that's going to hide the ear and then put it in top uh, on top of my ear stack group and applied the erase blend mode this has given a really good result here and i highly recommend it now on this side we have the hair in front of the face and then we transition to behind the face so here I used a boolean subtraction on the hair itself. So I duplicated the face, modified my nodes to, uh, so it's not going to subtract all this hair, uh, then yeah, just erased that part of the hair from the shape. I'm not such a fan of this one because it's rather destructive and I feel like the entire point of vector base is to be less destructive. And it, it just doesn't give you the flexibility if you want to adjust the face a bit here. The hair is going to need adjusting once again. You can see I've made this braid a different shape. And I've done that because I have a stroke that'll be here in my final picture anyway. So it's just really easy to break it up there. And this is going to be a cloth object. So it doesn't need to you know color match that this hair. So it's, it's super easy in that situation. Uh, so this technique was an odd one. I'll just call it a sharing of lines method. So I have the ear and the, sh the face here as one object. And instead of doing any sort of masking, I've sort of just matched the lines. So here's the hair in front and this hairline makes, the, makes up the ear line. So it's kind of an odd workflow, but uh, as you can see, it's produced a fine result. No problems in this case here, but probably wouldn't do it again. Now this method is getting into that tedious realm. Uh, this is when I was learning, so that's why it's a bit awkward, but I'll show you anyway. So here's my one shape for the hair on top. As you can see, it was originally penned out as all one shape. And then I picked a line, say here, that I wanted to transition for the hair behind the face. And you can see it's all uh, janky and so you have to put a bit of work into color grading or matching between the two. So the, sh the stroke doesn't work, we have to turn that off and we all have to you know, change, pick that color and match it. And now if we want this shading, we're gonna to have to duplicate it into our other shape and pull this line up so we don't have a visible seam. And 
yeah, it's just a bit awkward. But here's here's a character that I use that method on to OK results. So here is the join of the two pieces. You can see on the face, this is where it transitions from in front to behind. So that's why I've split it here. And I've gotten around that stroke issue by um, having the hair as one full shape and then expanding the stroke so I can have it just by itself. And it's just a bit fiddly, um, but you know, it can work. So those are my five methods to get around this issue of layering and masking hair. If you have any others, please feel free to comment and let me know. Love to hear it. And these characters have just been a pastime for me, developing my vector skills. So if you'd like a workflow tutorial or something else more in depth regarding these, just let me know. That'd be great. And I'll see if I can help you out. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.